Listeners, welcome to the Bucknuts Morning Five here on Monday, January 15th, 2018. I am David Biddle, and I'm very happy to be joined by Alex Gleitman. Alex, how are things on the Big Apple this morning? They're good. Ready to roll. Uh, you know, beautiful day out here. Still a little cold, but, you know, it's a new week, and uh, it's Martin Luther King Day. So, remember uh, a great civil rights leader, and uh, enjoy the day here in the Big Apple. Yeah, happy MLK Day to everybody out there. Some people are working. Some people have the day off. Uh, I know my kids have the day off. Um, Buckeyes were near your neck of the woods, not in New York City, but down the road a little bit in Piscataway, New Jersey last night. Uh, We're going to start off talking about hoops, and we're going to talk mostly about football recruiting during the show. But I do want to start off a little bit with Ohio State basketball. I know you and I both going to this Rutgers game last night. We're thinking, you know, just just get out of here with a win. That's uh, these are the type of games you can't lose, as you posted on the front row message board. You got to win these games. And they didn't mess around, Alex. They they come out there, um, and, and you know they're they're up, you know pretty nice at halftime, twenty eight fifteen. Then they come out and score like the first ten points of the second half. I mean, it was a blowout. They win the game sixty eight to forty six. Um, just your thoughts on the Ohio State basketball performance last night? Yeah, I was super impressed when I saw the spread was uh, what was it like six and a half, and then it went down to six. I was like, that's that's a little shady. I mean, Rutgers. I watched Rutgers this year lose. Uh, I was there actually for the game. They lost to Stony Brook, and then a week later they lost to uh, another America East team in Hartford. Um, so I knew I've seen Rutgers bottom, uh, but then I've also saw Rutgers last week. You know take Michigan State on the road in overtime um, and almost win that game. So I'm sure the spread was a little bit influenced by that. I'm sure the spread's a little bit influenced by the fact that, like, Vegas is sitting there or the the general public's sitting there kind of saying, like, Ohio State eventually has to lose in the Big Ten, right? And and Rutgers beat them in the Big Ten tournament last year. Maybe it's a chance to catch them, you know, on the road, feeling a little too overconfident. But as you said, Dave, there was no signs of that whatsoever. I mean, early on, it was somewhat of a closer game, but the Buckeye defense, I think that's what's really impressed me. The Buckeye defense is very tough. I mean, they play really good basketball, and when they're not playing good basketball like they were in the beginning of the Maryland game, Chris Holtman does a great job making in-game adjustments um, and finding out, you know, what the issue is and fixing it. And, and so far, you've got to be really impressed with Holtman. I think he's done a great job. Um, Ohio State's obviously 6-0 and in the Big Ten. I think the Big Ten's a little bit down this year. I think I, I sat on the board. They're a little similar to the SEC in football in the sense that they're very top-heavy, and then the rest of the conference is all kind of very mediocre teams. I think you have Michigan State and Purdue. I, I know Michigan State's going through a rough stretch. I think those are the elite teams. I think Michigan and Ohio State are, like, solid teams, and then I, everyone after that is really kind of a toss-up. Um, so, you know, I think, again, just long story short, going, going to Rutgers, getting any win was good by me, but winning like that is super impressive. And they're going through a stretch now the next six games – Rutgers was part of a seven-game stretch where all seven of those games are now all six remaining games are very winnable. Um, I'm not expecting them to win all six, but, you know, even if they could go, put it this way, even if they went three and three in the next six games, um, you know, that's nine and three in the Big Ten, you know, heading into the last third of the Big Ten season. So they're in really good shape right now, um, you know, to possibly be in the Big Ten race and, and then certainly make the NCAA tournament. Yeah, Chris Holman's tied uh, Dr. Tom Davis's record, um, starting off six and zero in Big Ten. First uh, coach since Dr. Tom Davis at Iowa to start off six and zero in Big Ten play in his first year um, in the Big Ten. So he's doing a phenomenal job. Buckeyes are fifteen and four overall, as you mentioned, six and zero in the Big Ten. And before we move on to football recruiting, real quick, rankings will come out later today. Last week, I thought Ohio State would be ranked. I wasn't really sure about them. I thought they would be, and they end up like twenty ninth in the AP if you include the others receiving votes. Do you think they'll be ranked later today? Uh, that's a tough question. Um, you know what? I'm going to go with yes. I think I think people are going to wake up to to the fact that Ohio State is now six and zero in the Big Ten. Um, as you said, fifteen and four overall. A uh, couple big wins on the resume. I think they're going to sneak in. They won't be ranked that high, but I think they'll sneak in at twenty four or twenty five. I I actually need to look at probably how the other teams on that list did. I'd have to imagine a couple of them lost and will fall out in the in the 20 to 25 range. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to say they sneak in at around 24 or 25. That's what I think, too. It won't shock me if they're barely out, like 26. But, yeah, I think they'll be 24th yep. or 25th. Um, all right, football recruiting, uh, what people really want to hear about, I'm sure. Although the basketball team's, I know, catching everybody's interest. Um, but let's transition to some football recruiting. I'm going to ask you about four guys. It's like the four main guys Ohio State's in on right now. I know they're in on more than these four, but kind of the four main guys. We'll start with – 
Tyler Friday. What is the latest, Alex, on Tyler Friday? Yeah, well, you know, Tyler was Brian Dome, who's one of the best uh, in the country and, and is the best on the East Coast, a guy I've followed and respected for a long time. Happy to have him in the 24-7 sports family now. He, he's, uh, he reported after talking to um, Tyler Friday's father that uh, Tyler was going to make a decision on Friday. Um, as we got closer to Friday, uh, Brian checked in with Don Bosco head coach Mike Teal, who's, uh, who's Friday's head coach. He actually used to play quarterback at Rutgers for Ohio State defensive coordinator Greg Schiano. And, and Mike said, uh, no, a decision's not going to come Friday. He's going to kind of pump the brakes a little bit and uh, wait, wait some things out. Could be a couple weeks. It could be a, you know, a week, a few days. So I, I think – there's two ways to kind of take this news. Um, well, first of all, I'll tell you this. If Tyler Friday were to decide on Friday, it would have been Ohio State. There's no doubt in my mind. I still think Ohio State is in the driver's seat here. I think they're in a great position. I think maybe there was some wires crossed, um, you know, between Tyler, his dad, his coach, when something was going to be announced. And I think, you know, they talk, probably talked about different things, and Brian checked in with them. Maybe the plan was different. I don't, I don't think – I think everyone started kind of panicking when – when, when Friday said, oh, I'm not going to decide Friday anymore, I'm going to decide, you know, maybe middle of next week or a couple weeks, and people are starting to say, oh, he's waiting to see what happens with Greg Schiano in the NFL, or, oh, he's, he's having second thoughts, Batman's getting back in, Michigan's getting back in, and, yeah, it does allow, like, Alabama, Michigan, Penn State, you know, to have more time to recruit him. But I, I, I just – I actually truly just think it was a case of uh, maybe wires being crossed or the plan not being completely set and, and Brian hearing different things at different times which were all correct. And so I think Ohio State's still in a good spot. But, you know, as I said, like, the longer this goes on, the longer other teams have a chance to get in. And if Greg Schiano does go to the NFL, I'm not saying that's the end-all, be-all, but it's definitely going to hurt Ohio State's chances to land Tyler Friday. But right now I would have them um, as a firm favorite. Javante Jean-Baptiste. Maybe it's just Javante Jean-Baptiste now. Javante Jean-Baptiste, uh, what's the latest with him? Yeah, this is a kid. You know, I, I love this kid. He's out my way. Uh, he plays for Bergen Catholic, um, actually a rival of Tyler Friday, Don Bosco. And, and this is a kid I, I really liked for a long time. Um, I know he was, like, in Ohio State's consideration set, but kind of on the back burner given, you know, they had Brenton Cox and Jason Owe and, you know, obviously Tyreek Smith, who they did land. And, and so there was really no reason to go after him. And then, you know, obviously – this early signing period really changes a lot of things. Like, everyone who signed is now off the board. When those guys, like, even if they were committed, they would still be on the board until signing day in February. So I don't think last year you would have had Ohio State chase a guy like JJB because, um, not because he's not good enough, but just because they still would have thought they, they maybe had a chance to, to flip Jason away. And maybe this is a guy who they would have brought in at the very last second for an official visit and done a last-minute flipper. But, um, you know, this is a kid now who's benefiting from the early signing period. He's getting tons of attention because he's one of the top, uh, you know, outside linebacker defensive end types on the board uh, heading into, you know, after the early signing period, heading into National Signing Day. And, and you know, Ohio State came in with an offer. They really like his game. Um, they offered him as a defensive end. He's 6'5", 215. So he's one of those kids who's going to have to he, – he has the frame, but he'll have to grow into his body – um, a little bit more to, to, to be a true impactful guy at the next level. And, you know, heading into January, it was a Virginia Tech-Boston College battle with Virginia Tech having the lead. Uh, he took an official visit. He had that on the calendar for a while to Nebraska this past weekend, and he had a great time. I'd probably – I think Virginia Tech's still up there, but, you know, you might have the, the Huskers as the favorite. Like, why take that visit to Nebraska even before Ohio State offered if you knew you were going to Virginia Tech? So I think Nebraska and, – and Scott Frost and co. recruited him at UCF, but – I think um, I think Nebraska is probably the favorite out of those three, but I know that once that Ohio State offer came in, um, as long as he took the official visit and all went well on his part, on his side of things, and all went well on Ohio State side of things, because this is a kind of an interview for for both sides. Um, I think you know Ohio State is the favorite. So he, that official visit comes this coming weekend. Um, he, I think he flies out there on the 19th. And so as long as everything goes well between Ohio State um, and, and Gene Baptiste, I'm going with the Buckeyes uh, to land a, a pretty good pass rusher and a, and, a, and a really good athlete at the defensive end position. Yeah, it would be a, a great lead find for them. I love his film. Um, just seems, he seems so explosive off the edge. I think that would be a great get for him. A um, couple more kids I want to ask you about. Rasheed Walker, what's the latest with big Rasheed Walker? 
Yeah, Rashid's also another kid taking his official visit this weekend. So it's going to be a big weekend for Ohio State uh, as far as, uh, you know, how their 2018 class ultimately shapes up. But right now, coming into this visit, some people will call it 50-50. I'll, I'll call it, you know, 52-48, 53-47, that Penn State has the lead over Ohio State heading into this visit. But it's Ohio State, Penn State, and Virginia Tech in this one. I'm calling Virginia Tech third. I'm going to have Ohio State as second right now, and I have Penn State as first. Um, he's taken official visits to both Blacksburg and Happy Valley, so that's good that the Buckeyes get the last official visit. I think I believe all three head coaches do have in-home visits, so it's going to be interesting to see how those coaches strategize when they take their visits with Rasheed Walker. But I think this visit is going to tell us a lot. Um, if I'm making Right now my crystal ball is on Penn State, but if I'm making a long-term projection, it's, it's really hard to bet against Urban Meyer having a uh, prospect on campus for 48 hours and that prospect not walk, especially at this time of the year and that prospect not walking away um, as uh, with Ohio state as his leader, especially when things are so tight heading into that visit. Right. So I think Ohio state definitely going to turn the tide this weekend. I think they're going to emerge as, as kind of a leader for Rashid Walker. I'm sure he's not going to give away too much as he, as he, you know, moves toward a February 7th decision. But I think, I think that's what's going to happen. But I think the, the big key is, how, do, how does Rasheed Walker bond with Ohio State's uh, current players and their, their incoming commits and the, the early enrollees and things like that? Because I think that's where Penn State really has the edge. I think they have the edge when it comes to Rasheed Walker being really comfortable with the players on the team and the guys that would be in his recruiting class. Um, I think he's built more of a relationship with them, and I think that's what Ohio State really needs to focus on this weekend. Another offensive lineman that they're in on, Nicholas petit Frere. What's the latest on petit Frere? Yeah, I mean, this one is, uh, you know, Ohio State for a while now has felt like they've had a better shot than, than most people think they did. And then I think people are starting to realize that they actually do have a better shot than maybe anyone originally thought. Um, but I, I still think it's a longer shot than any of the, the three guys we already talked about. A dream class would include all four of these guys, and then you, you tie a bow on that, you wrap it up, and you send it away, um, and you move on to 2019. But this is a, this kid is, is is a really, really nice player. Uh, I think this was – a lot of people saw it as a Florida-Notre Dame battle, but Florida had the coaching staff turnover, and the, the, that whole staff who was recruiting him, including the offensive line coach, is no longer there. Um, Notre Dame uh, has been recruiting him really well, and it's something – you know, the whole religion aspect and academics and, and everything like that is, is definitely attractive to him. But Harry Heastan just left Notre Dame to go to the Chicago Bears, so the – the, the Irish need to find a new offensive line coach, and that's a guy who's a tremendous recruiter, a tremendous position coach, and I have to imagine that helps Ohio State in this one too. And, you know, there's some other teams involved, but um, I think people have viewed those two teams as Ohio State's main competition. And he's supposed to visit that last weekend, I think February 2nd weekend, right before signing day, which is nice for a last impression. Ohio State, I'm sure, will take their uh, in-home in visit right before that. They'll visit him every week, Greg Schiano's kind of the lead recruiter there, knowing the high school really well. And then, you know, uh, Greg Sergio is involved, um, and obviously Urban Meyer. So, you know, they're going to they're gonna be on this kid really hard, and then they're going to get him for their vis uh, official visit, and then they're going to swing for a grand slam on that one. And as long as he makes it to campus, they're going to be right in that one. I, I'm not calling him to Ohio State right now, but, I mean, that, that's the type of sleeper recruit, you know, we, we've known Urban Meyer to get. Um, so there's certainly a chance, but, you know, again, better shot with the other three we already talked about. Before I let you go, over the weekend, uh, Bruce Feldman from Fox Sports tweeted out that he's hearing there's a lot of interest um, for NFL defensive coordinator jobs in relation to Greg Schiano, that he's in the, the running for some NFL defensive coordinator jobs, or at least there's some interest there. Now, who knows if, if he's interested in going back to the NFL for maybe one year before. So I think his end game is to be a college head coach. And I don't know if he wants to go to the NFL just for one year and then jump back to college. If he's going to be a college head coach, why not just stay at Ohio State? But uh, I want to focus on how this is affecting their recruiting efforts. You mentioned when you were talking about Tyler Friday, Alex, that the Shiano situation, that could be affecting Tyler Friday a little bit. Just um, what do you think is going to happen with Shiano? Do you think he's going to stay at Ohio State or not? And do you think um, how much is this affecting Ohio State's recruiting efforts? Yeah, I mean, listen, it's probably causing pause for concern with, with like a Tyler Friday and a Nicholas petit Frere, who are the two guys we talked about that, you know, really are, would be – impacted uh, by Greg Schiano leaving as, as kind of the lead recruiters there. He's technically the lead recruiter for Gene Baptiste, but I think, you know, the way they moved on that one, it was, it was Urban Meyer and Larry Johnson. I don't think Schiano affects it that, 
as much, I would say. But, you know, it's a tough one to call because, as you said, like, what's his end game? If his end game is to be – if this whole Tennessee thing kind of made him say, screw college and, you know, I want to be an NFL head coach again, or even if before that he was like, I want to – I just – his, like he would prefer to be an NFL head coach over a college head coach. I think the move is to go is to go to the pros, and I think it is to be a, an NFL defensive coordinator for a year, two years, whatever, before getting another shot. Um, and, and there's possibly a tremendous opportunity with his really good friend Bill Belichick up in New England, um, with Matt Patricia looking like he's going to be taking the Lions defensive coordinator position. And the good thing for Ohio State is that you know no decision on the Patriots defensive coordinator may not, it, like that may not come until after the Super Bowl, assuming they get there, um, which, which would mean even if Shiano did take that job, you know, it's probably after national signing day where anything's announced a little shady, kind of like the Stan Drayton thing a few years ago, but certainly something that, you know, is a possibility and it may not impact the cycle. But I think going back to Shiano, it's, it's, it's like, what is his end game? If his end game is to be a, a, an NFL head coach, he may, he may leave to take that job with the Patriots. I mean, that's, that's kind of a dream job. Um, you know, we, we had sources tell us he was on a, a plane coming back from Arizona. Was he talking to the Arizona Cardinals? As Bruce Feldman said, other teams are interested. I, I personally think if he left, it would probably be for the Patriots job. But my gut is telling me he's not going to go anywhere. I think he's going to stay around Ohio State for at least another year. Um, sources, and that's, that's my gut, but it's also sources telling me that right now the plan for Greg Schiano is to stay at Ohio State. Of course, things, we, as we know, change really quickly with a, an offer or, or something like that, but a situation that you really just can't say no to. But right now, my gut and my sources are telling me that Greg Schiano is going to stay at Ohio State. I hope your gut and your sources are right. Him staying for one more year would be great. Alex Grinch could work under him for a year and then take over as defensive coordinator. It would be a perfect situation. So let's see what happens with Greg Schiano. Great stuff, as always, out of Alex Gleitman. Thank you very much, Alex, and thanks to all the listeners out there for tuning in to the show. I appreciate it. Hope you have a great day. Let's hear that Buckeye swag, best damn band in the land. <laughs> I'm a good guy, I'm a good guy, I'm a good guy.